Hey guys, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about one of my other obsessions and hobbies, skincare. I love skincare. I've been really obsessed with researching it and trying out so many products. I really don't want to think about how much money I spent on skincare over the last few years, especially the ones that didn't work for me. That's always a heartbreak. I've been really into it since I found the skincare addiction subreddit where I've learned so much information about skincare. I think I started it probably about 23, 24, and I am 29 now. So I've been into it for a while, been through a lot of products, found some favorites that have been with me for probably a good five years. Very excited to tell you what I like and what I use and what has been successful for me in terms of ingredients and products. I do want to add though, just because something works for my skin and it's like my holy grail does not mean it's gonna work for your skin. Everybody's skin is so different that my holy grail product could be your nightmare product. And literally the only way to know if a skincare product will work for you, it doesn't matter how many good reviews there are or what I say about it or what anybody says about it, the only way to know for sure if it works for you is for you to try it on your skin. So I do recommend getting samples of products when you can, especially if it's an expensive product. Try it on your skin over a period of time and see if your skin actually does or doesn't like it before you buy it. I also recommend if you are going to buy new products and introduce them to your routine, space them out. The reason I say this is because if you add five new products at once, and your skin goes to hell and has like a bad reaction or gets like heaps of acne out of nowhere, you're not gonna know exactly which one of the five products is causing it. Whereas if you add in one product, give yourself about two weeks before you introduce anything new, and within that two weeks your skin goes to hell, you're like, oh, it is this motherfucker that I just added. If you have a product that you add in and your skin looks really great, you're like, cool, that's awesome, I know to repurchase it. If you add in five products and your skin starts looking really great, you don't know which products are actually doing the work versus which products might not be doing anything for you that you could potentially cut out and not spend money on in the future. So my skincare concerns, I am 29, so I'm getting on the anti-aging train a little bit. I have dry, flaky skin, so I'm really on the moisturizing side of things. And my skin has been breaking out like just along the chin for the last six months, and I've had a lot of trouble controlling it. Finally found some good active ingredients that are in my nighttime routine that help to control it, but the rest of the ingredients are there just to help fade these scars. I'll see them again. There we go. So these are probably up to six months old. If I get a pimple, whether I pop it or not, I will get a scar and that scar will stay around for months. The newest one is probably maybe that guy. Some of them might be as new as like two weeks old but most of them are months old and my skin just scars and then stays scarred for ages. So I'm trying to find ways to fade the scars and trying to find ways to prevent the acne from happening in the first place so I don't get scars. Yes, that's me, that's my skincare goals. I think it's also worth noting that a lot of skincare is genetics. So my dad has amazing skin. He is 61, I believe, and he could easily pass for 15 years younger. Um, that being said, uh, my skin does get out of control if I don't control it. I have to find products to help keep acne in line. I have to find products to help keep my flakes in line. I know that my skin would 100% look worse if I wasn't doing skincare to try and fix it. Secondly, I have siblings which don't have the exact same genetics as me, but they have similar genetics and none of them are as into skincare as I am. I'm the second oldest and I, I probably look like I'm the youngest. Not to like try and make them feel shit or like, you know, but I feel like my skincare is a big part of what my skin looks like as well as genetics like obviously but I feel like my skincare does make a big difference also my lifestyle I never been a smoker I don't drink a lot I don't go out tanning I don't do drugs like a lot of my lifestyle is fairly healthy my one vice that affects my skin is eating way too much sugar I am such a sugar junkie it's really bad but apart from that my lifestyle is pretty good in terms of skincare so that also will affect things just so that keep that in your brain tank sometimes skincare products aren't the complete picture. And also, I'm not changing my lifestyle to try and get perfect skin. I'm not like, oh, I love smoking and tanning and I have to cut it out so I have perfect skin. Like, I just don't enjoy those things, so I don't do them. I'm not going out of my way to make my life miserable just to have good skin. I feel like that would be like a really weird warped point of view. And similarly, I'm not doing all of these skincare products because I have this like unattainable desire to have perfect skin. I just really freaking enjoy it. And I love researching skincare ingredients and I love trying new products. It's just like a really fun hobby for me. I'm always trying to add in more products so it can be like a longer part of my day. It's probably why I fit on skincare addiction because it really has gone to that point. But I don't feel like I need to. There is a simplified version of my routine if I am in a rush. So those points made because I think it is important. This is what I do in the morning. 
Hello, good morning, welcome to my bathroom. The first step is get this shit out of my face. So I've got my hair tied back off my face and I'm going to use a cognac sponge to cleanse my face with just water. I will only use face wash in the morning if I've washed my hair and I wanna make sure I get all the shampoo and conditioner residue off my face. Otherwise, I find that doing a cleanser twice a day strips too much of my natural oils from my face because I do have dry skin. So in the morning, I'll splash my face with water and I will use this. It's a very gentle physical exfoliant. It helps to get rid of any of the leftover products from last night and it helps to gently buff away any flaky skin that I might have from my dry skin problems. So I wet the sponge with water and then get rid of any excess. And then literally just close my eyes and just use it to buff over my skin just to get rid of any dried skin and any leftover product. And I will usually go through and get fresh water in there a couple of times while cleaning. I usually finish just by splashing my face with water. And I get a microfiber, microfiber towel. And just gently pat my skin clean. I like using these because they're cheap. I got a bag of like 20 of them for $10 from Bunnings. Or you can get them from like automotive stores. They're usually used for cleaning, buffing cars and stuff like that. But they're really good as facial cloths because the microfiber is really gentle. It doesn't scratch your face and you can use a fresh one each day so that you're not worrying about damp facial cloths growing bacteria and then you can just keep washing them every day. Well not washing them every day but putting them into the wash pile and grabbing a new one every day. So the next step is getting some witch hazel which I use kind of as a toner. This is alcohol free, it's an astringent and I'll get some on a cotton pad and then gently go over my face and this is just like a secondary kind of a cleansing step I guess just to get rid of if I have any Vaseline on my face from the night before, um, any leftover makeup any dirt. This will really gently clean the skin without stripping too much of the natural oils like a cleanser might. usually have leftover mascara from the night before so it's helpful under the eyes. I've been using this for several years. I've been through many a bottle. It's just like one of those real easy steps. Ow. The next step is vitamin C which is one of my favorite ingredients and I have a new favorite vitamin C product course it's like one of the more expensive ones. Uh, Drunk Elephant C Firma. You can get them in these little tiny baby bottles which is awesome for me because they last me about probably about one and a half to two months and they come in these little baby bottles with the B Hydro which is like a hyalur hyaluronic acid gel moisturizer. So these two together cost 33 Australian dollars. I think it's 28 American or something like that. The big ones 100 and something here. And I do get worried that if I buy the big one, I won't use it all in time before it gets oxidized, before it starts oxidizing. So this one, I feel like I can pick up a fresh one every couple of months and it doesn't break my budget to spend, you know, $15 on this and the gel moisturizer every month. So I usually, what I've been doing recently actually is I recommend mixing them together and I find that I do like to mix them together because it seems to make two drops of them and see go further over my face. So I'll squirt out two pumps of the hyaluronic gel moisturizer, which is called Be Hydra, and then two pumps of the serum. So this is quite a light color, which is great because it means it hasn't oxidized too much. I was worried buying this in Australia that it was going to be like just a really dark orange, but this one's still nice and fresh. I mix them together in my palm and then I try and evenly distribute it over my face. They make sure to get over all of those scars, just areas of discoloration. I go over my eyes a bit as well because I'm not very sensitive to vitamin C like it never burns or stings me I've got pretty pretty strong skin against vitamin C so be careful if you are sensitive to it because it can sting one of the main reasons that I use vitamin C is to help brighten my skin so if I've got discoloration from acne scarring if I've got discoloration just from sun exposure because I'm 29 now so as you accumulate through your life more and more sun exposure more likely to get the little um sunspots so vitamin c will help brighten those and i feel like it really does help and then long term i think it's something like 
three to six months of use of vitamin C every day will help your collagen, will help your skin to produce more of its own collagen, which then helps with sagginess and wrinkles long term. It's a good anti-aging product as well. There's a few different forms of vitamin C as well. The gold standard is LAA or L-ascorbic acid vitamin C, but it is pretty unstable, especially in water-based formulas, which is why these have quite a short shelf life. Usually they're between three to six months before they start to oxidize, but it is the best form of vitamin C and the kind that I feel like works the most for my skin as well. So if you keep the bottles away from sunlight and if you keep the bottles somewhere like a fridge where it's colder, they will oxidize more slowly and then you can get a longer shelf life out of them if you aren't using it frequently enough to use it all before it oxidizes. I usually do the vitamin C after a shower but before breakfast so that it has like a good 20 minutes to really sink into my skin before I go on the next step of my skincare. You don't have to wait 20 minutes, I just like giving the one main active of the morning a lot of time just to do it. Thing. I also use an eye cream in the morning which has vitamin C in it. It's the Sea Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream by Drunk Elephant. I've never been one for eye creams. I was always kind of the belief that you could just use the products you're using for the rest of your skin around the eyes and that would be fine. I tried a sample of this that I got from a Sephora and it seriously blew me away. And I, like, I've never been blown away by an eye cream before, but I really felt like it just made the underneath of my eyes look more filled. And then when I was wearing concealer, like it just looked a lot more smoother and stayed a lot more smoother throughout the day. And also it brightened my under eyes a little bit and helped with wrinkles a little bit. Like all the claims that they make that usually aren't true, this one actually fulfilled it. And um, the sample I got was in America and it hadn't come out in Australia yet. I was so obsessed. It was like a hundred Australian dollars. <laughs> a lot of money for an eye cream. I was so obsessed that my friend who was visiting in America, I was like, you have to bring it back for me. Like. I run out of my sample, it makes such a difference. I'm so in love with this eye cream, please bring it back, send him the money for it. She brought it back. Now it is available in Australia, so I can keep reusing it. Um, but I only have to use such a small amount that I feel like it will last me a really long amount of time. So even if it is expensive, it actually works and it will last me a while. That's my justification. A lot of people have had irritation with this, I think due to the high vitamin C content. So just because it works for my skin and I love it does not mean that you'll love it. There's a lot of people online that have written reviews that have had irritation from it. So if you want to try something new and you're not sure about it and it's expensive, ask for a sample first, just to be sure. So this has a cool uh, twisty cap. I do like the drunk elephant caps. And then just get a little bit. That's usually enough for both eyes. Like you really, you really don't need a lot. And then I evenly distribute it between both fingers. They'll just pop it underneath my eyes. And I feel like this makes such a difference. It's really crazy. I didn't think I would be an eye cream person until now. You can bring it onto the upper lid as well if you like. I usually concentrate it mostly on the lower lids. And they usually do that with the vitamin C step in the morning so they have a little bit of time to sink in together. The next step I like to do is add a bit more moisture back into my skin. So I do a few different layers of different hydrating products. The first step is using Dr. Jart's Ceramidin Liquid. So this is a really moisturizing toner um, and it's also got ceramides in it to help the skin heal itself. Both hydrated skin and a healthier skin barrier. So I usually squirt out just a little bit of this. It's quite thick. And then I'll pat it over my face. The next step of moisturization for my dry ass face is using a little bit of rosehip seed oil. I rosehip seed oil is my favorite kind of oil. Um, it just it just really gets along with my skin. It sinks in really nicely. It doesn't make me look too greasy. It just makes me look a little bit glowy. And the linoleic acid um, that is naturally present in rosehip oil also helps to fade acne scarring. So I usually just get three drops of this, just a little bit, and I'll pat it over my scars. And then I'll just get it around my face, especially areas that I know that get dry. So I get dry in between my eyebrows and on either side of my nose. Put a little bit over the cheeks. I don't put it around my eyes because I wear a lot of mascaras that, even if they're waterproof, if I've got oils around my eyes, the oils will make the mascaras rub off and leave little panda eyes, which I don't like. So I just do avoid the eye area with that in the morning. Next up is my moisturizer. I'm going to be using Elta MD AM Therapy. I've been using this one for several years. It is my favorite. I've been through so many containers of it. I usually just have the one squirt, one pump. <laughs> so that's a weird word. And I'll just try and evenly distribute it around my face. I'll focus on areas that I know that get like a little bit drier and definitely need some moisturizer on them. 
and I'll just rub that in everywhere. The ingredients that I like in this moisturizer are, wait, I'll just read everything from the website. So it says, it moisturizes while smooth skin texture and even skin color and tone, stimulates the skin's natural water system to moisturize without heavy oil or emollients. Hyaluronic acid in helps increase moisture absorption and retention, um, safe sense of skin. So I think a lot of the Elta MD products are designed for people that are post pr procedures on their skin, if it's like laser or anything that makes the skin a bit more sensitive and a bit more in need of like healing, moisturizing products. So I, I like them a lot. I feel they're very gentle when I use them. So uh, the ingredient insights are Scott willow bark extract, which has a natural source of salicylic acid that stimulates cell turnover. Actually, didn't know that until now. <laughs> um, it's got niacinamide, which is anti-inflammatory, reduces redness, minimizes the appearance of dry or damaged skin, and restores suppleness. So I definitely like niacinamide as an ingredient. It, it's really good at helping to even out skin tone and, and fade my acne marks. It's also got caffeine. I didn't know that either. <laughs> Helps stimulate aquaporins to retain moisture and improves the appearance of dry or damaged skin by reducing flaking and restoring suppleness. I didn't know that caffeine helped flaking until now. And it's got a vitamin C ester in it, so just a little bit more antioxidants, and then hyaluronic acid, which is really good at retaining moisture and making skin uh, a bit more supple. The last step, and the most important step of the morning, if I had no time to do anything and I could just grab one product, it would be this. Sunscreen every damn day of the year because 90% that could be too much I should reset home okay so there's a thing called photo aging which is when UV rays damage your skin and produce your skin to age prematurely so the UV rays will break down the collagen within your skin and just cause more sagging more wrinkles it makes your skin have age spots it makes your acne scarring darker and then of course it can cause cancer. So I like to protect my skin from the sun. I think it's something like 90% of premature aging is caused by UV rays and not even like standing on the beach, having a good old like two hour soak in the sun, just incidental sun exposure, walking to and from your car in the morning, walking to get lunch during the day, just little bits like that will add up and cause your skin to look older than it is. And because I live in Australia, we get crazy high UV I think there's like two weeks of the year where it's like, you know, it's below a three in the UV index, you're fine to not wear sunscreen. So I pretty much wear sunscreen all the time, especially because I'm using products which make my skin more photosensitive, um, make my skin more likely to get sunburnt and damaged because they thin out. Like I use retinol and I use AHAs and BHAs and they're both more likely to make my skin get burnt. So I'm always protecting my skin. This is the one sunscreen that I've used on my face for probably five years now like I've used it for forever I've been through a couple of different versions this is the newer version that came out last year which is waterproof some people loved it some people didn't like the change I don't mind that it's waterproof so it's a Japanese sunscreen which means I have to import it online that's fine I'll just buy like six at a time and know that I'll go through them I think one lasts me one to two months and the reason I like the sunscreen so much is because it doesn't feel like you're wearing sunscreen. There is nothing that I despise more than having a really thick, oily, sticky layer of sunscreen on my face or my body. I freaking hate it so much. This is like a really cosmetically elegant formula which goes on and then just sinks into the skin and then disappears. It looks really great under makeup, it doesn't make you look greasy, it doesn't irritate my skin. And the other thing that I like about Japanese sunscreens is that it shows the PA rating. Normal sunscreens in Australia will show an SPF rating. 50 plus is pretty good. You don't really need to go higher than a 50, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But the PA rating down here doesn't get shown in a lot of Western sunscreens. So the SPF refers to the UVB rays, which are the rays that usually cause sunburns. But the PA version refers to the UVA rays, and they're what penetrate the skin at a deeper level than UVB rays, and they're what causes the breakdown of collagen and, and the premature photoaging of the skin. So having four pluses is the highest possible rating that a sunscreen has now on how well it will protect you from UVA rays. And a lot of the Western sunscreens, you just, you don't know how much of that you're protecting yourself against. And because for me, like a big part of wearing sunscreen is to prevent photo aging, I really do want to know how much UVA I'm being protected from. So four pluses is the highest possible rating. SPF 50 is, is great. So it's a really strong sunscreen. It's protecting you from both forms of UV rays and it feels great on the skin. So I, you're supposed to measure out sunscreen because the amount that you need is actually a lot I'm gonna measure out, I'm gonna show you how much it is. So for an average size face, they recommend one quarter of a teaspoon, which looks like nothing. And in my mind, I'm always like, I'm definitely putting in more than that. But when I actually measure it out, 
it's so much more than I'm putting on that I usually make myself measure it out every day just so that I make sure that I'm covered. Making sure you have the correct amount of coverage for each area with sunscreen is really important because when they do the tests and they measure it as SPF 50, it's with the quarter teaspoon over the face. If you were to apply half of it, it's not going to give you half of SPF 50. It's not going to give you an SPF of 25. It will more likely give you an SPF, I think it's between five and ten like it dramatically reduces it's not like half is half like you get way less SPF if you reduce the amount of coverage so say if you've been putting on half as much about realizing you think you've got a really strong SPF 50 and you're protected from the sun but really you've got like an SPF of seven you're way more likely to you're way more likely to end up getting burnt and then being like oh man my sunscreen doesn't work but in reality you're just not putting enough of it on so I'll show you what a quarter of a teaspoon looks like it's probably like a fairly good representation of a quarter teaspoon so I'm gonna grab a glove of that and start putting that on my face. If I weren't to measure it, I would honestly probably put less than half of this on. Just be like, yeah, I'm glad if I put on this much and be like, yeah, there's a solid layer of everything. But there's still so much left in here. So that's half of it, and that feels like a solid layer over my face, and then you just have to keep going. I definitely want to protect my skulls. Put more of that on the head. On the head. <laughs> on the forehead. Of course, that's pretty clean now. So there's layer number two. Make sure I get it all the way to the corners, like where my hairline is, protect all of my face skin. Cool, and I feel really greasy, but this will sink in if I give it, let's see, I'll see if we can see how much is on my skin right now. Yeah, that's about, that's about how much sunscreen you should be using. This is like light stuff. So I'll give that usually five minutes to sink in and then go over it a second time just to rub in any bits that are left sitting on the face, inevitably. And then I'll do my makeup. So just a little bit of a pause just to make sure that sinks in before continuing on with the rest of my morning routine. But making sure that I have well-applied sunscreen is really important because it's going to make my acne marks fade faster, the sun will just make them darker, it's going to make my age spots fade faster and have a more clear, even-toned complexion, it's going to make sure that I don't have premature wrinkling and sagging from the collagen being depleted from the UVA rays, it's going to decrease my chances of getting skin cancer, and just like all those things that you can be throwing products at or throwing procedures at to try and treat in the future, you can just prevent them from happening in the first place, for the most part, by using sunscreen every day. And this stuff is fairly cheap, it's $15-ish to get one or two months supply, depending on how often you are applying it. So yeah, for me there's like really no reason not to use it, it is the number one most important product for me. It's been a few minutes and I can rub it in, and it kind of has the feel of like a slight skin primer before you put on foundation, but really it's like mostly non-existent. The one bad thing I'll say about the sunscreen is that I, well I put it over my eyelids. I know that some people don't like putting sunscreen over their eyelids. They'll wear sunglasses with UV protection to protect their eyes from aging. Um, I don't know why I just, I don't care. I just put it over everything. But it means that I can have the sunscreen transfer itself into my eyes and cause stinging throughout the day. So that's the one bad thing, which is partially my fault because I applied on my eyelids but the one way that I found to avoid that from happening is to put a facial powder whether it's a transparent powder or a powder foundation if I put that over my eyelids usually over my whole face just to make it slightly more matte I won't have the sunscreen transferring into my eyes so it's a little tip for you thank you so much for watching something a little bit different hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned stuff and don't feel too preached at I just really love skincare and sun <laughs> um, let me know if you have any other suggestions for what you'd like to see me talk about. Um, I'll get back to you in the comments and I hope you guys have a great day.